Um, so I think you all know who I am. I hope you all know who I am. Um, and all I'm doing really this evening is saying thank you for joining us tonight. Um, there's another one just arriving. Um, thank you for everything you've done in the past for Pathfinder. And we are looking forward to getting going again um, towards the end of this month um, with a somewhat startling program of lots and lots of things already happening and a number of ideas bubbling through for other things that might happen. So you'll have enjoyed the last year off and now we're going to make you pay for it, basically, I think is the, the answer. So um, order of proceedings, very simply, Tom's gonna to talk about venues and stuff. Um, Chris is gonna talk about volunteering and stuff. Adrian's going to talk about manual changes because um, he didn't step back quickly enough when I called for volunteers. Um, and then we're going to talk about promoting Pathfinder to fill up all the spaces we've created this year. Hi, Heather, we can see you now. And there is only one of you at this point, but is that, if I look around the corner, I can see Matthew as well. Um, so that's good. Um, and getting your help, please, with making sure that I think we've got potentially 250, 260 student spaces available this year across all venues, including Yorkshire. It would be rather good if we could fill them all up. So, um, and that would give us even more to do. So, without more to do, as it were, um, Tom, do you want to talk? Well, I was only going to say I don't quite agree that we've just had a year off um, on the basis that so. we continued to grow into 2020 and we still offered six events, or not just offered, ran successfully, even in a COVID world, six events um, in what was a very challenging. Uh, environment on all of the venues um, and for that well done to all of you guys because obviously we wouldn't have been able to do that uh, had you not um, put your concerns to one side and done what was asked of you and 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 nailed it quite frankly um, <clears throat> so yeah we had February uh, at Malvern um, and then August Seaford Malvern and then October Tockwith which was also a new venue for the year so another uh, piece of um, exciting chaos uh, that comes with a brand new venue uh, and see for the Malvern again um, and with that in mind this year is going to be um, similar we're going to trial two new venues this season or this year um, one at Berkeley in May um, and one at South Cerny in August uh, alongside the familiar venues of Seaford, Tockwith, Malvern um, I'll come on to Malvern in a minute if we can actually get it um, so the events as it stands, so I'm not really sure what order we want to do this, but let's just go with what I'm thinking at the moment. Um, fine. Yeah. Much like that. Um, so, uh, in May we'll be running a five day event at Berkeley, which is, um, a, uh, ex, um, uh, nuclear power station on the bank of the river seven in Gloucestershire. Um, this venue came about as um, from an anecdotal conversation we had with Martin Searle at Malvern in August when he said, why don't you do more events in, in, our, in Gloucestershire? And we said, show us a venue. And uh, annoyingly, he has, and we will. So um, that's why we're at Berkeley. And we've already used it for Car Club, um, last tail end of last year, and we will use it again for Car Club before we run our Pathfinder event there. So hopefully we'll have a decent understanding of how to make it work. Um, is there a way of doing uh, me sharing a screen with Google Maps? Might that be? Yeah, hang on. The green button in the bottom. Yeah, just share. The host disabled participants share screening. Oh, he's just. I know, it's outrageous. Control, he, control. Big, big boss You're man. You're now the host, way. Thomas. You're now the <laughs> host. Oh, wow. Right, I'm done. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> See if this works. Um, can anybody see? Yeah, there you we go. got that. Yeah. Good. Yeah, well done. Okay, so M5 is this bit here. Uh, where the cursor is, this is River 7. 7 Crossing is down here, Bristol off the screen at the bottom. This is uh, the hamlet of Ham or something. This is the old nuclear power station. And this is the area we have available to us, which is a very tight um, road network with curbs, in places, two-way traffic, but a lot of it's one way. Um, buildings, awkward, blind corners and the like. It is a superb um, urban driving environment. Um, and then behind the fence line, 
um, are these large car parks, uh, which we will be using for ungraded. And also like what we do at Seaford with a big empty space road network with cones in here as the week progresses. We also have the access road out to the main entrance here, which gives us an opportunity to get up some sustained speed uh, I'm not suggesting 100 mile an hour, but certainly 30s and 40s for our drivers is appropriate and possible. Um, so that's the venue. We are using this here called the Sabrina Centre, which is the PCC training centre, which is how we're getting access to the venue. So it's like Malvern, old school Malvern. We'll have warm, heated, hot and cold running water. Um, heated facilities um, and in a COVID social distancing environment it's big enough to support the size event that we're going to use and more than big enough in the future when we don't have to uh, keep two meters apart. Um, so yeah that's the venue we're going to have in um, May. The complication with this venue is that in the in, on a working day this is an industrial park there are various um, businesses that run in here and this car park is full of cars during a working day so our event will be bank holiday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday at the end of May, which is the beginning of the half term week and the following Saturday and Sunday. Um, so it will be a five day event across two matches. Um, so they will be weekends. Uh, Seafood will run normally Monday to Thursday on this occasion in May half term. Um, so that's Berkeley. And then in August, we will be running um, uh, three events, Seaford, um, Tockwith, which is a, was our new event for this year, um, sorry, last year, and also um, South Cerny, if I can work out what the bloody hell it is, up here somewhere. Um, so also just in Gloucestershire on the Wiltshire border is this venue. Again, we are very familiar, the car club, the under 17 car club people among us will be familiar with this venue. Uh, we were there a couple of weeks ago and we're back there this weekend coming. This is a large circular loop with um, some large areas of hard standing here. A fairly mixed surface in places, uh, but I won't <laughs> be able to have an intric intricate road network. Um, and this will be more akin to our olden days at Toc uh, Toc Morton with the marquee, toilet block and etc. And trying to work out where the water source is to go and collect water probably. Um, so if you're really lucky, you'll see John Beckford making a cup of tea, which is usually hilarious to watch. Um, he makes a very good cup of coffee. Come on. <laughs> I've heard that. I heard that he, he collected it from um, Costa and just put it in a car club mug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, um, so if I can stop that. Yeah. OK, so they're the two. They're the two new venues we've got for this year. Um, with that one done. Um, Chris, to talk about volunteering and various other things on his list. Yeah, I've got uh, bits on my list. Start off with just very quickly in relation to the COVID situation, just for your awareness all in relation to our operations in May, June. Um, the step that we will be under uh, still has some restrictions in play. However, we are operating under exception 13 of the regulations, which is supervised youth activities. And that endures then through step the final steps, providing the dates are met. Um, so that's the reason that both Car Club and Pathfinder can operate. Um, I'm still in contact with people in PHE in relation to the safeguarding steps, certainly for May and more than likely August, face masks will still be a requirement. Um, I'm going to, and the hand washing, I think, should be a routine full stop, actually, for us, to be quite honest, uh, going on into the future. Um, I'm still in discussion about the car seat covers. There is some real benefit to them, particularly in situations where, um, because people are staying in hotels or whatever, you can't wash clothing easily. Um, so there is, a, and the point of transferring things between vehicles is the key concern, um, which is why we were using the car seat coverings. Um, so watch this space on that. But as per last year, we will be providing the face coverings and the hand washing and the car seat covers if we're using them. Um, we've binned the gloves because providing you all do the hand washing when you put on and take off your mask, the, the gloves actually don't achieve anything. 
in fact, they probably transfer more between surfaces than prevent. So that's the COVID bit. Um, in relation to the volunteering, the so what uh, Tom, John and myself are trying to achieve this year is flexible arrangement in relation to volunteering, wherever possible, we're using people who are in close proximity to venues, just in order to make sure, firstly, that the events are nested within a community that is local and relevant to that event. Uh, so the more we can draw in, which is great because uh, Yorkshire, you're already doing it, which is fantastic. Um, so we want to try and mirror that as much as we possibly can. Um, and then the second reason is just if we are conscious in relation to whilst we don't want to make a thumping profit, we clearly need to cover our costs. And at the moment, in effect, the southern events kind of underwrite the northern events. Um, with the numbers that we get in Cyford and up in Yorks. So um, the more we can reduce costs, the better, because the more we can support those events, which are actually, uh, well, they don't break even, that they, they, they make a loss in effect. Um, so we just, you know, we want to be able to put on as many events as we can. So, you know, carefully um, monitoring costs um, will help us enable to do that. Um, so that's why we're trying to resource locally. Um, thank you for all of those who've replied uh, in relation to Barclay. We're almost there on Seyford. Um, Yorkshire, uh, I haven't yet started looking at because I've been concentrating on the May dates, but in any case, uh, Terry, Ian and co, you tend to resource up in Yorkshire yourselves um, with not that much input from, from us, which is great, uh, happy with that. Um, so at the moment, concentrating on that May, those two May events, um, and thank you for those who replied, really good. Um, there'll be a bit of shuttling around between John, Tom and I, um, and some, again, also conscious of sort of expanding people into roles where they want to have more exposure to different roles. Um, I'm looking at the camera to see where Kev is. Where's Kev? Yeah. I am here. I don't know what page I'm on. Uh, <laughs> you are. Wrong oh, yeah. the wrong there you are, Kev. There yeah. you are, Kev. Yeah. I'm on time. I was here this week. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, mate. No um, so, yeah, you know, trying to get Kev involved in different roles and what have you. Um, and that just increases our capability then in relation to put people into events. Um, Heather replied to you earlier in relation to Matt and the marshalling position there. Uh, Matt, if you're happy to help out at Barclay, that would be fantastic. Um, I'm conscious, as Tom said in the intro, that Barclay is going to take a fair bit of marshalling. Um, the narrow roads and curbs have the potential to be wheel eaters. Um, and I think particularly on that second weekend, we're just not going to need to keep an eye on it. Um, so we may, you know, we'll marshal to the max. And we have also got to make sure that that approach road that Tom showed you on the map is secure and made a private road. Um, so that we can operate and that will need unfortunately a marshal up the top pretty well full time but well, no full time in order to make sure nobody else comes onto site and makes it a public site um, so it will eat marshals at Berkeley. Um, you mention on that one Chris while you're mentioning Berkeley that on the second Sunday we will be sharing the venue with the whole of Car Club, or as many of Car Club as we think the venue can go with, which is yet to be negotiated. It might, it um, might look that will bring a, a whole new dimension yeah. into, in, into the way we operate. It will be a Pathfinder event with Car Club guests from, a, from an operational point of view, um, because we have to obviously make sure we look after the Pathfinder um, people um, who have paid a reasonable amount of money to be there. but. Um, it will be great from the point of view of, of giving giving car clubs some some scary people to work with, but giving particularly Pathfinder people some some good opportunities to see what car club standards are like, and particularly to encourage migration from Pathfinder to car club um, as a, as an objective for getting at least some of the people who are there to sign up and, and become part of the club um, as well. Which is we get some success with that, but it's not universal. So we, um, you know, in terms of the car club, particularly then for that, uh, that second week, um, they have to do motorway driving. It probably will look like a motorway, actually, because we'll have everyone queued up around the site waiting to move. Um, but now we'll, we'll, we'll manage it. Um, 
no problem at all. And uh, but it will require the marshals in particular are going to have to be really vigilant, uh, and the layout is going to have to take into account that as well. Um, so that's in terms of the resourcing. Um, if any of you haven't come back to me yet, if you could um, ASAP, I'd be really grateful, um, and uh, I can then send out the final list of who goes where. Um, and then the final bit is just we're again conscious, obviously, in relation to people who are traveling to attend venues. So food uh, we will be doing. I think there's probably some discussion about uh, breakfast, but we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, but, you know, expect to be looked after. Uh, Pauline is going to be uh, down at Barclay and then she will also be at South Cerny in August. Um, it's doing what she does with her tea and coffee, which we're immensely grateful for, which is fantastic. Um, so that's, and then we will also just also look at something we couldn't achieve last year, um, which was some form of meal, food, one evening, for those of you who are all giving up your time and volunteering, just as a, as a thank you uh, in relation to the time that you, you give up. Um, but we'll just have to watch that. <laughs> Based on that and see how we can achieve it in a compliant fashion and also cost effective. Um, so in the meanwhile, Mr. Hopkins, sitting in the middle of my screen, um, I think you said you'd prepared, was it 323 slides? Of, um... oh, no, I've got no <laughs> slides, John. <laughs> um, Adrian is our is our is officially our, our sort of Pathfinder chief instructor. And um, so every time we want something changed in the manuals, we just throw it in his direction and wait. Um, and Obviously, as with every every winter, we've done some updates. So we thought we'd share them all tonight. Um, as ever, when we kick off an event, there'll be an instructor briefing on the first day to make sure that you're fully up to speed, as we as we always do. But we thought it's just worth sharing at this point um, various thoughts of, of Chairman Aid. So, um, Adrian, away you go. Okay. Yeah, we've um, gone through the manuals again. I think. The changes that we've made are fairly minor again, again this, this time around. Um, so there shouldn't come as ma any major surprises in there. Um, the focus has been on the participants manual and the student progress manual. And I've got to do a minor update to the instructor's manual. Um, I'll talk to John about getting copies of those out to all the instructors before um, the, uh, the next course, so you have time to read and digest those. Um, one of the things we have ch changed, which may or may not um, affect you, is that we've actually replaced this weighty tome, the um, official DVSA theory test for car drivers. We're not giving that out to students as part of their welcome pack. Um, question whether they actually use it in any great detail. Um, we think we've probably cracked the, um, the online theory tests. The scores are there. They get the opportunity to redo them. They can read the, their highway code. So what we've actually done this time, um, is, or we'll be doing this time, is actually issuing them with a copy of uh, the IEM's Road Smarts, How to Be a Better Driver. Um, I saw Terry raise his eyebrows there. No, no, um, just a... <laughs> no, no comment. I, I, no comment. It's it's not it's not a yeah. I, I just find it was surprising. You sent me a bit by surprise on that. I'll shut up. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> the the, expl the explanation is quite simple. They don't use the theory test book. They probably won't read Roadcraft because it's so horribly badly written. But maybe one or two of the parents will be able to work their way through how to be a better driver, and that's that, that's essentially the logic. Um, and the other thing is cheaper. Roadcraft. And, and yeah, cheaper. one is cheaper probably than Roadcraft. Um, yeah. 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 Roadcraft's a nightmare if you if you're not that way yeah. inclined roadcraft is diffi a difficult read yeah but road the bottom line is roadcraft is still our bible so for the avoidance of any doubt any questions refer to roadcraft um it's just a, i suppose it's a giveaway it's something they can read they can work their way through how to be a better driver and i suppose on the other side effect might be that they might think about doing the iem course or um taking on a rosper course later in the day yeah. uh, adrian on on that as far from the IM side, that it's, it's, it'll be superb um, as, as a promotional uh, 
thing for the kids and probably for the parents as well. So it will tick all the right boxes with the uh, with our relationship with the IAM by, by issuing that. Um, we also let the IAM know we're doing it. And we'll we'll come back to that one in the next in the the, the next bit after next. I think Terry, we're going to come okay. back to that particular relationship. So good. Um, We've mentioned that we're doing some uh, four day courses. We have done them in the past and we'll continue to do them going forward. So one of the things is we've done is we've actually sort of standard, we've produced a schedule for a four day course. Um, and that the fundamental change there is it's bringing forward the skills uh, test activity and the break and avoid activity by half a day. So uh, on day Normally we introduce skills on day three morning, they're all from memory. We're now bringing that forward until the uh, afternoon on the Tuesday and following that with the second group on the Wednesday morning, followed by break and avoid in the afternoon and then break and avoid the following morning. And so we've tried to keep, ensure that we keep um, the fourth day clear. So if we do have any issues in terms of scheduling or whether then we do have space to move other things around in there. Um, do, 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 do. Still planning to do the instructor briefings at the start of every day at eight o'clock. And we've also uh, introducing debriefs at the end of each day over a cup of coffee, cup of tea um, on the end of each day at approximately five o'clock when instructions finished. With, with cake provided by the chief instructor, I heard, Adrian, is that right? Well, we'll see what we can do. I mean, Andrew set the bar fairly high, didn't he, at, uh, at Malvern? <laughs> no, no dropping out of it now, Adrian, come on. No, no, I, yeah, I, may, I may end up have to subcontract some of that. But <laughs> yeah. It's usually to the wife, I hasten to add. No, I, we wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Yorkshire, gets, Yorkshire gets mine from my wife, so... Yeah, the, the advantage of the end of day briefing seems to be you know, we get greater coherence, greater understanding of, um, of who's struggling more than anything else or who's advancing and, and needs either additional support or different levels of guidance. That seems to really pay off in a very big way at the end of last year. So, yeah. OK, um, the participants manual update um, following sort of a suggestion from Terry, we've introduced a section on mechanical on under the, the heading of mechanical knowledge um, to cover advanced driving assistance systems and uh, hybrid electrical and electric cars. Um, more and more, more and more, we're, we're seeing the advanced driving assist systems coming in, and it's probably a nod to the future at this stage. But it's in there as a read for the students. Um, there's also uh, an update to the progress manual in that we are signposting um, those new sections on a, uh, ADAS and hybrid systems at level two. Um, so at the end of level two, have they looked at, are they aware of, have they done their homework in relation to their car? If not, then that leads into level one. Um, and at level one, there's a checklist right at the back of the, um, the manual, the progress manual, which lists all the um, advanced driver assist systems and invites them basically to tick the box as to which ones apply to their car. Um, again, it's just trying to get them to engage. Have they thought about it? Um, and ask the instructors just to check through that. And if not, then point them back to their manuals um, um, and the car manual to do some homework for the next session. Yeah, I'm sure we'll catch a few of the uh, the adult, uh, responsible adults on that subject as well. Yeah. Uh, because they won't know they've even gotten fixed to their car half the time. Um, the other so thing that encouraging I... them from sitting um, in the back seat when they should be driving as well. So they turn up in a Tesla, they're not allowed to sit in the back. <laughs> Well, by the end of the year, the uh, the lane automatic lane keep will be um, illegal on them uh, up to was it thirty seven miles an hour, thirty nine miles an hour, sorry. Yeah, so, uh, thirty seven mile an hour. I read this morning, mm -hmm. and um, I can just see how many people will be on the M one doing thirty seven mile an hour, <laughs> mile <one> hour. <laughs> causing absolute chaos. I'm sure you know, if, a... anybody, if anybody turns up in a Tesla, surely we're going to put them in one of our Astras, and we're going to be testing the Tesla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Why do you think we need an extra generator, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> so, so my, my experience of Tesla's at Thruxton on a skills day course there with the IEM is they last for about less than two hours um, before the guy gives up and, and goes home to recharge it. Mm. So uh, well, the, it's five, isn't it, Tom? We don't get very far in that either. No, this is very true. It's a similar problem, but at least it's easy. I can just wander down to the petrol station. It takes me all of five minutes to put 100 litres in it, not to quite <laughs> an electric car, which is exactly the point I want to make with the electric car driver when he turns up in it. Yeah. Um, the other thing is um, auto instruction. Um, that Because of the, the resource drain on the larger courses, we are making that an optional activity for level one. And that's at the discretion of the chief instructor for the course. So the chief instructor for the course will make a decision halfway through the week as to whether he has sufficient resources to offer that to everybody or not, uh, as the case might be. Um, at Malvern, at last year, we ran something like, we ran three instructors um, for one day um, to try and get everybody through because everybody was was um, knocking on the door of, of level one. So it's just recognition that we get into that scenario again. That's one thing we can make optional uh, just to manage resources. Um, gonna, my next task um, will be to update the um, instructor's manuals just to reflect those changes. Um, but those that will be done in the next couple of days with uh, John uh, wielding the editorial um, red pen, so to speak. And that's all I've got, to cut, um, got to, written down to cover. <laughs> it's scary, isn't it? Right, well, I will have a cup of tea because I'm very boring like that. Um, so I'm going to suggest we, we declare the, the, the formal proceedings closed and you can all go back to whatever constitutes a life. Um, thank you all incredibly much for A, everything you've always done, B, everything you're going to do, and C, for turning up tonight and, and sharing a couple of hours with us. I hope it's made sense, and we will do it again, because it. So I've certainly, apart from the videos at the end, obviously, um, I've enjoyed myself. So, um, back to life. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank